Welcome back, Matamas here, hope you're having a great day and thanks for joining me today on this video. So India, a very large military, a very broad military when it comes to different uh, aspects of the armed forces that they tend to showcase and broadcast as to what they have and what they don't have. And the interesting thing is, is that the Indian military is always looking at procuring new weapon systems. It's baffling actually to me how much equipment they're looking at buying, but it makes complete sense. They are trying their best to keep up with the more modern day militaries around the world instead of, you know, using the old Soviet style equipment that they still use for the majority of their equipment today. We all know of the Arjun main battle tank, the Mark I and Mark II. There has been some serious rocky roads on that main battle tank. But where is India when it comes to infantry fighting vehicles? We don't hear much about it. And interestingly enough, I found a very cool video introducing the new vehicle that they wish to procure and design into a standard infantry fighting vehicle for the Indian Army. Now, they wish to replace, actually, their Russian T-72 tanks currently in service too with a separate project, which coincides with the project I'm going to talk to you about today. Two very ambitious projects to equip the Army with very futuristic combat vehicles, and they're going to be a bit of a game changer for the Indian industry, because at the end of the day, most of these vehicles are going to be produced within country, which is a massive fan of, and hats off for India for doing so. One vehicle that I want to talk to you about today in particular is the futuristic infantry combat vehicle otherwise known as the FICV. As mentioned it is really ambitious and an indigenous design of which to manufacture a futuristic infantry vehicle by the private industry by roping in on foreign original equipment manufacturers and the army has a requirement for more than 2600 of these vehicles. On the other hand, there's another project called the FRCV, which is a little bit different, but is basically going to be called the Future Ready Combat Vehicle, which is supposed to be replacing their main battle tanks. And again, futuristic tanks through different partnerships is going to be a little bit more tricky. You have to, we've seen with the Arjun main battle tank being a native design, it's not had a great start. And again, this is to replace 1,771 tanks. But the video I'm about to show you today is going to go over some key features of this new FICV. And honestly, as a, I guess, prototype or a concept vehicle, I actually really love it. I love the features and some of the things they put on this vehicle. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, of course, Matamus, you love it because you love everything. Or maybe it's because of the fact that India ripped your head off when you did that skip video on India the other day. So you're probably sucking up to. No, no, no. Seriously, guys. This video obviously has quite a bit of cringe in it, and we'll talk about that as we go through. But in terms of, you know, showcasing and graphics and all that stuff, put that aside. The basic principles of this vehicle are pretty darn impressive. And we see a lot of trending features coming out on modern infantry fighting vehicles today. But it seems the way they've put this together and what they're wanting from, although ambitious, is practical and is feasible. And I really like some of the features they're going to put on this vehicle and the way it all kind of ties in together. And... You know, sometimes stepping above the mark and really aiming high is the way to go. Instead of, you know, what they could do is copy a similar sort of design to the BMP-2s that we're seeing here. Which I hope is not going to be the case. And it doesn't look like that's the case when we look at these vehicles coming up in this video. So, let's take a look at it. Let's see what you guys think. And we'll have a little discussion as we go through the, some of the key features and attributes. Which I really think are going to be very good for India's armed forces. So let's start off then that it's air transportable. Now, the weight of this vehicle is fairly light at about 19 to 18 tons, but the interesting thing is I can almost guarantee these weights are not going to be accurate to the fact that most of the equipment won't be installed in these kind of numbers, as you can see, excluding hard kill and including hard kill and network systems. So it's going to be interesting to see how much it weighs once they pull that stuff on. It does have dual rear opening doors, which is kind of strange because if you'll see in a little while, it's actually also a flat drop down back door too. Obviously a CBRN filter, air conditioning unit, which is very important. ATGM launchers, which of course being with the BMP, they have the same kind of systems. Active protection, we're seeing that very common now. Um, and this is the strange part, that's what I mean. The armor protection is failing a little bit here, making a door that is both side open and drop down. It's kind of strange. Uh, ignore the cringy beeping noises in the background. Obviously some spare HGMs in the front there, looks a little awkward. Uh, 200 rounds of ammunition storage, not too bad. Again, some extra 7.62 2000 round boxes there. APU, obviously you need an APU to power your systems when you're not uh, running the main engine. A little weird how they've set the layout inside here, I can almost guarantee being it's a concept that's not how it was actually be. Troops are rear facing and side facing, which is good. Big old powered engine there, 600 to 750 horsepower, probably more than enough that's required. A good power to weight ratio there of 30 horsepower per ton. Let's have a look where these uh, 
vehicles head out here then. The cringy graphical setting. It looks like Armor 1. Um, so, yes, segmented rubber band track. I will be doing a video on this in the future, but uh, it seems like the way forward. And I do have a slight inkling more nowadays towards rubberized tracks. Um, a good servo drive turret, which is very, very important. This is one of the big things that I think is going to be ambitious for a vehicle like this. They want to allow it to cross rivers. Now, BMPs obviously are renowned for being able to do so with specifics uh, that are placed on the vehicle. But it does meet certain requirements for it to allow to negotiate across water at four knots. That's interesting. It has its own hydrojet pod uh, to allow it to go fairly fast. Ten kilometers an hour on water isn't too bad. It has a positive buoyancy, so hopefully the troops don't sink in it. Uh, and a fairly good angle of exit from water. You've got to remember, guys, once you get it in the water, there's not going to be a loading dock to get it off the other side. You need a vehicle that can get out of that water safely without tumbling back in there. I'm not too sure why it's driving through Nest quick, but that's okay. More lasers, interesting stuff. It doesn't really tell you much about it, other than the generic night vision goggles scene that we see here. Okay, so it does an identification range of 4 kilometers, which, okay, that's not really insanely good to me. Uh, more cringy target-locked PNGs here. Um, here we go then. Telescopic caseless ammo, caseless ammo sorry. Um, you know, programmable airburst is something that's very common now too. So it's nice to see that coming in. A little more on the ambitious side I see here, trying to squeeze all this thing into this turret here. It is obviously um, not manned, which is another trend we're starting to see going around the world now. Vehicles that are having these... Wow, that was quite the jump. Um, having these unmanned turrets, which I'm coming along more towards a very good idea of doing so. It does have soft kill measures. Pardon me for the more triggering, literally triggering alert laser warnings. Uh, smoke screen is pretty standard. I mean, pivot turn capability should be standard too. Neutral turns, if your vehicles, especially as an infantry fight vehicle, can't do it, then it's just not a good thing. Is that a car alarm? Interesting. And so hard kill protection, something that I am skeptical about. It's not been fully tested in combat, I don't feel. It's, you know, in test bed environments, great, it works fantastic. But I'm really nervous about hard kill systems and how well they're going to affect uh, in a real combat environment. Aerial target engagement, I mean, any vehicle can really engage aerial targets. Uh, it does have a high angle of elevation, 70 degrees is pretty good. Wow, that was quite special, wasn't it? Uh, ATGM is a range of 4 kilometers. nothing special, but it is a top-down attack capability, which is good. We're not looking at tow-wire-guided missiles, which, you know, the older vehicles are working on. More target-locked cringe there. Uh, so yeah, top-down attack is the way to go nowadays, of course, with the hard-kill protection systems. You want to try and utilize that angle of attack as best as you can against those kind of defensive measures. The integrated battlefield management system, we're seeing that all the time, you know, networking between the battle group. Very common, again, nothing really to get special about. Um, apparently, these rounds can knock out an entire encampment. Very, very interesting, man. They seem to have surrounded the building that's on fire. The troops are highly cringy as they come out of this vehicle. Um, can carry, from what I can see, uh, eight troops, so not too bad. And there they are, the vehicles parked up with the Indian flag flying proudly in the background. So, overall, some key features that I want to talk about here. Water crossing, I think, is very ambitious for a vehicle of this kind. I really think they're underestimating the weight of what this vehicle could be. Um, caseless slash telescopic ammunition, yes, good idea, fantastic. I'm not too sure how well it's going to tie into this vehicle and how proven the technology is um, yet. I haven't done enough research on it, but I will do a video on it in the future. I like the rubberized tracks, especially in a desert environment. It makes sense. I'm just worried about how well it would last over long periods of time. I do have my, um, you know, my doubts about track repair coming from a armored repair environment in my previous British Army military career. I do have my skepticism about rubber tracks, but I think for India it would make definite sense. For an armored personnel carrier carrying eight troops uh, in a protected environment, pretty good. And notice this video doesn't speak too much about armor packages, which of course is going to be generic to whatever they want to put on it at the time. It would be nice to know its rough armor um, settings and what it could take in terms of, you know, uh, indirect fire or even just direct fire, small arms fire would be nice to see. Hard kill protection systems, this thing's covered in it. I'm not too sure exactly what protection systems they're going to put on this, whether it would be brought from another country, which I can almost guarantee it would be. I'd be surprised if India develops their own, uh, or if it is developed by their own in their own marketing and defense industry. It would be really cool to see, but we will see. 
So let me know of your opinion on this vehicle. Do you think it's something that India is going to be able to pull off? Do you think this vehicle is going to come into full procurement and development stage and we're actually going to see this vehicle develop? I hope it does. Really good luck to you and India for making this vehicle. I hope it comes through. The next most interesting thing for me is what India is going to do to replace these beautiful aging Russian Soviet main battle tanks like the T-80s and T-72s. But we will see. Um, guys, if you enjoyed today's content, leave me a comment. Leave me a like. Uh, if you want to support my channel, I would really appreciate it because you know it is military content and youtube hates military content creators go check out my patreon account the link is in the description box below uh, i hope you have a wonderful day thanks again for joining me and let me know of any upcoming further military uh, equipment or topics you want me to do and click that little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming content in the future all the best and bye bye